Yeah, so in terms of um, the sort of changing system, I, I think that start, starts with the artists and changing the way that artists would work here. So bringing this idea of bringing artists to work together as a collective, which is you know, a lot of artists are kind of uncomfortable with. We, we've, we've struck, in the past, we've struggled with artists that, in, that were kind of insisting that they weren't part of the collective. So kind of bringing artists in and, keep, and working with them over a long period of time about for them to feel comfortable working in this more functional way as part of a group where everybody has a, has a different, slightly different role within the programme. And we did that, some of the historic projects, like the one we did in Japan, we, very, we took seven artists and they represented seven positions within contemporary British art. So there was somebody from who was a commercial artist working with a commercial gallery and there was an artist who worked in the public sector putting on, in effect, commercial style shows in public space and then there was you know, a social engaged artist and there was an education artist. There were these different positions in the art world uh, and getting all of those people, get, making all of that kind of function work together was kind of one of the, was really, that was a very interesting and successful project, actually worked really well. And it was very careful, we were very careful about how we set it up and that everybody, we knew that that group of artists, they'd worked with us over a long period of time and we, and I was fairly confident they would work okay together. We've always, we've always been changing the residency base. So when I first arrived, as I said, it was um, the artists came on their own for two months with a fixed budget, and they lived alone. And then another artist arrived. They left, and another artist arrived, and they did the same thing. So this very kind of simplistic and reductive process was going on, where, no, where there was no exchange. There was no nothing was expanding or, f or flowering. So the first thing I did was to bring all the artists in at the same time, then to get them all to work together. And then as time's gone by, we've changed, constantly changed the system for residencies of how it works. So we had research and development grants. And then from that, we would draw projects. But what we now do, which does work, seems to be working quite well, is we have a system where, first of all, you come as a volunteer from Monday to Friday, so with this kind of additional control with me living there and they work for us on things, you know, fairly mundane things, same things that I'd probably, you know, they'll work with me a lot of the time. So they'll, they'll be involved in different stuff, but there'll be a lot of cleaning and gardening and cooking and working in the village and stuff like that. And maybe if there's an artist here working with one of the artists. And then if that goes well, then they can do an internship and those are usually six weeks and they still work to the agenda of the organisation, but they're likely to work more specifically on certain areas. After an internship, they then move on to a commission. They, they're so connected with people here that they don't do ridiculous artworks. This is about embedding people into the way of working and into the community. Um, and <clears throat> I mean, if it's kind of what we've been doing. We've done that. Uh, I mean, I don't. Th I think an awful lot of them are, are never. They're not really. They're not real. I mean, people really quickly realise when they come and stay here that they probably don't really want to get that close to the land. <laughs> <laughs> that actually working on the land is, is you know, extremely hard. Well, it's not hard work, it's just a way of life. And people are, and I think people are still, you know, from a, a non-farming background, that is fairly alien notion that everything is wrapped up in, in effect, your work. That's your life. So we did a project uh, a while ago in London where we got, again, people representing different aspects of social engaged practice. And we, one of the issues that 
we set up the exhibition so it had an internal budget so it was in effect a kind of small uh, political system in itself and you know as you can imagine <laughs> no one would agree on anything <laughs> and there are, one of the biggest bones of contention was the idea of work and that what constituted work and I just I just said well we're just going to say that work is symbolically you get paid for working an eight-hour day, but we ex we'll obviously we're going to expect people to do an awful lot more than that if this is going to actually function. And you know, even the idea of an eight-hour day was an anathema. People were really, some of the artists were really uncomfortable with the idea that they should work an eight-hour day, and that that should be defined as, and, and that would be defined as being there, being in attendance, and and active would be defined as working. So they were like, well, but I work 24 hours a day because I'm always thinking about projects, even when I'm asleep. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think definitely we are certainly trying to do that. And, and I think succeeding, I mean, I think for, there, it is both, it's, it is both a shift for artists and a shift for community and this and any community to, to think in a different way about how they work. Um, for our community here, the idea of working, the idea of working for the general good, for a wider benefit is something that's kind of been lost. But actually people, when they rediscover it, love it. In the same way that artists, when they discover making things that people like and value and use is again, is again a revelation they love it Art, you know artists even if they've not made something that they would regard as a piece of their work they've at least made something that people are interested in their response is enormous from artists and equally with the community I mean one, one simple project Alistair might have told you about the Harvest Festival which was a very early project in this kind of Europe this, ba this sort of new idea of expanding what already exists, but also from invitation. So people ask us from the village, we don't do things unless we get invited to do them. So we're invited to develop the Harvest Festival. And the result of that was all the artists involved in it really loved it, although none of them would have considered it a piece of their work. But you know, one of them made a, a cake with some marzipan fruit on it and vegetables. And, every, and it was, they did it really well. But I mean, they'd never done it before, but they had a, a craft skill and a, a visual awareness, and they were able to do it very well. And people were you know, completely amazed and delighted with it. And the artist, like, I mean, it's quite funny to see an artist respond to something like, clever, you know, <laughs> clever you. But I mean, everybody likes to be valued and appreciated instead of people going, uh, what's that? Why have you done that? <laughs> so, the, on that hand, the, the, real, the thing that was really stunning about that project was the, how people who, so at the end of the project, people who had, who'd eaten the meals then distributed the freezer meals to old people in the village. And it was that um, act of community, I mean, you could say charity perhaps, but I would say more like community, uh, that completely changed the people involved in that cha completely changed their attitude uh, to be to realizing how much pleasure they got out of that process of that, of giving and and it being valued and appreciated and that all these old people wrote them letters how lovely the food was how much they enjoyed it and you know that just so that happens every year now and people it just was like flipping it turning something over it because all of those instincts and urges are there they've just been subsumed by making more money out of tourists and and hating people you know learning to hate people by overexposure and all of those sorts of things so something like the honest shop i mean i i always thought with the honest shop it worked because it it people generated income from it and it encouraged them to make things so that's a good thing and you know sort of an education element to it but Principally, I thought why so many people were doing it was because they were making money. And actually, when we had a meeting with all the people that make, 
they all said it wasn't about making money, it was about meeting people. So uh, these are people who live in the village, many of whom are, have always lived in the village, who don't know each other in a village of 600 people. So it's, it's, like a, it's almost incomprehensible that how you wouldn't know everybody in a small village of that scale. Nearly everything in the village has been done without funding because we don't want to be the arts organisation that rolls into town with a big bag of public funding going, this will be good for you, you've got to do it our way. So it's kind of starting with what they're already doing and expanding on that. And that's been the real miracle, really, of transformation, is that we've expanded on what they're doing, not expanded on what we're doing. <laughs> And they have, the village themselves, or the groups involved in different projects, they've raised the money for things, if it's needed. But a lot of things have just been done with volu voluntary, on a voluntary basis. And we try to do things at weekends, and we try to make sure that's, you know, it's from, from a voluntary perspective. I mean, I think, yeah, fundamentally, I think that the, the rural context is an extremely rich cultural base and people, place, combina this combination of elements creates um, uh, an, a, a fantastic basis for developing anything, I mean, work, but you know, art if you like, but anything really. And, uh, and I think that, but I think what happens is that it's constantly instrumentalized and the vast majority of art projects that use the rural use it as a theatrical back backdrop. They don't use it for what it actually is and they don't discover what it actually is. And one of the reasons we run this very complicated induction process is that we, you have to get people under the skin, under the the exterior image of the place, or you know, its symbolic refer, its symbolic, um, uh, um, yeah, point of reference for an urban audience. Like this is the place where food grows. I mean, this this, for example, really isn't the place where food grows. But I mean, you know, symbolically, that's fine. That's very, there's countryside. That's where you know, that's where our food comes from. Yeah, I think in a way, there's cynically, there are different. The idea of landscape purely as an aesthetic thing has shifted and artists are now interested in it but as a uh, connection to food production say or you know some other, other or environmental issues or whatever but it's still it, it's still often just symbolic value it's not the re it's not the real place but I do on the other hand do think it, it is encouraging and exciting how Many artists are thinking that they can work in rural places and that, that, that a rural place does actually have the complexity and interest to support their, their, their work and their way of life. Because I kind of feel like, particularly among young artists, there is a real openness to having... They, they don't really see their future in, in commercial gallery spaces. They don't, they don't imagine themselves... Uh, doing biennales and the rest of it there's just so much competition that a lot of young artists kind of realize that isn't going to happen for them uh, but I don't think it's just that that they don't think it's possible but they actually think they actually want their work their create their what they're able to give uh, they want it to function they want to see it work in in society so I think there's a kind of move there's a real move in that direction and an, an openness to an interest in other art other art forms, as I'd call them, like agriculture. Um, so uh, I, that sort of shift is happening anyway, and um, we've been able to kind of capitalise on that to some extent.
with a taking a critical position on the art world is a surefire way to get accepted by the art world. <laughs> Nothing they like more than to drag you into their yeah, in, I mean, into the you know the commodified. I mean, they think you know, galleries are thinking about how they can buy and archive things that we do. Collectors are thinking about how they can buy and make resaleable things that we do. Of course. I mean, we large, I, I personally totally ignore all of that. Uh, as soon as they manage to find a way of doing it, it well, I mean, I guess I, the way that I understand art is that it's a live language. It's not, a, it's not an end in itself in any way. It's a language to translate ideas. And the form of that language re needs to remain uh, constantly evolving and live. Otherwise, it doesn't function. It doesn't work cause, because it becomes commodified and instrumentalized and it becomes muse museum material. But that happens incredibly quickly. I mean, you basically need to be constantly evolving the language and changing it. For it to to remain, to, from in my mind, for it to remain as art, because as soon as it becomes uh, understood or, um, yeah, museum turned into museum material, it's, it becomes a dead language. So what we look at is dead art uh, or dead language, which is it's interesting, fascinating dead language. You see, you can watch, you can, and we spend all our time tracing the histories through the dead languages. But then we often forget that we're sp we should be engaged in a live language. <laughs>
things within the culture of the village that would would influence how people think and would would be a really valuable uh, perspective on the place and so on so what we what we try to do is integrate a, a wide tourists into or visitors into what we are what's going on every monday we we do this lunch and uh the food comes from the farm and people bring stuff in from their garden and we cook it all together and then we have a nice lunch and it's lot uh, and we discuss things like tourism at lunch and tourists attend that and they contribute to those discussions i mean they're interested and excited by where it is they're coming to what what it, why they're coming there wh who they are you know they're inter those are things they're interested in and they, of course they love that that's a real participation uh, and they'll come back you know every year for for that experience but not for the experience they currently get so in a way it's making it's making it's making strategic use of tourism like how tourism can impact and influence the culture of the village and develop and educate and expand people's potentials and horizons. What we're trying to do at the moment, I don't know if Alistair talked about it, was is to integrate here with the Institute and the museum and basically turn it into a village uh, village project so this would become uh, a more as it is but for in the induction process in effect would be this building and visitors and so on and then the program itself would be run in the village by the Institute so everything would really initiate be initiated from the Institute and operate across the village in the church in the shops and uh, everything well as we do now but more so uh, and integrated into that would be a school so what we're trying to do is shift in effect the power base <clears throat> in terms of us as an arts organization being able to do initiate and make things happen we're trying to change, switch that over so that is something that belongs to the community itself so it'd be run by um, a, a committee and then there would be a director based in the village that wouldn't be me uh well it might be but it, <laughs> it wouldn't be it wouldn't be me as grisdale it would be the person who would that would be a director of the village program yeah i mean that's the key thing that there's a long-term legacy and that i mean i feel really unsatisfied if a project happens and is really successful and is over that isn't anything that isn't worth doing you know if like for example we win the turner prize with some project if that was the end of that project that was a failure if if that project continues and bring and spawn something else then it then it's a success and it doesn't need to win the turner prize <laughs> to be a success it needs to have a life and needs to function and that all the projects really aim to do that 